Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, our focus is going to be on building and constructing modules that make sense to both you and your students. Um, there are several different ways that you can actually go through and create modules in Canvas, several different thoughts on how you want to organize it. Um, we'll, we'll focus on two primary ways to, to organize our content. Um, either one is perfectly acceptable. Um, just depends on you know your comfort level of utilizing Canvas and the, the all of the features that it has. So we'll dive into both of those and talk a little bit about some of the features that you can use in modules to keep kids on task. So uh, we will do all those things moving forward. To start, we're going to go ahead and go on the left hand side here and click into modules. And as you can see in this course, I will already have some modules built. Um, this is a previous course that I used to teach. Um, so we're going to go ahead and actually create a new module and practice within that. So I'll just title this new module. We'll add it and it will add down here at the bottom. So you can see modules are just ways of organizing content. So you can organize it by unit or chapter or you know any other way that you chunk your content uh, in, an, in an appropriate way for your students. In order for a module to be published, the little cloud here has to be green. Uh, if it's not green, it's unpublished and the kids can't see it. So that gives you an opportunity to work on modules if it's unpublished uh, without the kids seeing what you're working on. There are two ways at Center Grove that modules are typically organized. Uh, one is by utilizing pages and one is by utilizing uh, text headers for dates. So we'll look at both of those today. The first one we'll look at is organizing by text header. So you create your content, you create assignments, quizzes, all of that. How do we group that together in a way that's easy for students to understand what is done in class on that day? Well, to do that, we're going to add what's called a text header. So you see here, you can add an assignment to module, you can add a quiz, file, all kinds of different things. We're going to add a text header, and we're going to type in the date. Notice I've included two days because we're on a red-white day schedule. Um, if you're not on a red-white calendar, you can just keep it as one day. Um, but this was what works at Center Grove High School. And so you see, this is just the text header. There's nothing that's clickable here. It's not a link. But it's a way that you can organize content within modules. So if we're going to add an assignment here, we can just click and we can add an assignment that we've already created or add a new assignment. We can add quizzes, a whole bunch of different things. So I'll add that item there, and I will add, so we'll add this here. Um, and you can see everything is organized underneath that date. So it makes it easy to go through and see what is done on a particular date. We want to make sure that everything is nice and published as well. In addition to that, we can go ahead and add a new text header for our next date. So our next date will be... Uh, And you can see, and then you would add the content for the next days underneath that. Um, and then you can see you could add the content directly underneath that. So it's just a way to kind of organize your modules um, in a way that makes sense to you and makes sense to the kids. Another tool you can do over here, you see the gears to the side of the items you add in the module. Once you've kind of published things, you can indent if you'd like. So you can increase the indents. You know, for those of you who like things really, really organized, uh, like me, um, you can have everything indented in a way that looks, you know, it's not really a, a big deal, but it definitely makes things look a little more aesthetically pleasing uh, moving forward. So that's just one way we can organize content in our modules. The other way we can do this, and I'll add another new module, is actually by using a page per day and then linking everything within that page. So for example, rather than creating a text header like we did previously, I'm going to add a page. And I'm going to call that page the date that we'll be doing the assignments. So 
So I have my page module, I have my content page. I'm going to go ahead and publish both of those. And when I click on this, this is kind of like my, my home page for the entire day. So here I can edit and add anything I want to this particular page. So for example, I would probably start off with my student learning objectives. So students know what they're going to be learning today. I can add state standards and type those in. And then you could type in your agenda. So number one, we'll do our objectives. Number two, we'll do assignment number one. Three, we'll do lab number one. Four, assignment number two. Homework. So you can see I can add a lot more information to this. I can put my objectives, my standards, my agenda, and my homework. But what's really nice is that you can actually create these links to go to the assignments that you want them to do. To do that, we just highlight, and then you notice links on the right-hand side here. We can link to other content within the course. So we're going to click on Assignments, and I'm going to click on the assignment I want them to do. And you notice it highlights it. And then there's a lab. Let's say I want them to do this lab activity. I'll click on that. And then another assignment. I'll click on that. And as long as the text is highlighted, it becomes a clickable link that allows them to go to other assignments that you have in Canvas. When I'm done, I'll hit save. And so here you can see what this looks like for the students. Again, there's a lot that you can, you can add pictures, a lot more content. I'm just showing you the functionality of how to utilize the page. But underneath the agenda, you notice these are links. And when I click on it, it's going to take them to the assignment they need to complete for that day. So it's pretty easy to use. And what's nice is it organizes your content in a way um, you know, where, where it's chunked. It's chunked appropriately. And it makes it easy to copy from year to year. So there's a lot of really unique uh, you know, a lot of benefits to doing it this way. You're more than welcome to do it the other way as well. Um, but I find that this way provides a better opportunity for students to understand the objectives and see how they correlate with the agenda. So feel free to do it this way or the other way. But it's just one way that we can go through and organize our modules. I'm going to go ahead and go back to modules. We're going to wrap things up here in just a minute. There are a couple of other features I want to show you in the modules tabs. So I'll go back up here. And with the module gear, I'll click on that and click on edit and it actually provides some resources for me where I can actually control what students have access to and when they have access to it. I can click lock module and have it unlock at a certain date. I can add prerequisites. Do I want them to go through the previous module before moving on to the next one? I can do that and add other prerequisite modules as well before they move forward. I can add a requirement within the module. So in order for students to be able to move on, they must complete all the requirements. I can make them move through in a sequential order. Or I can also have them complete certain requirements. So for the Martian in the car, they have to submit the assignment before they can move on to the next one. If I want to add another requirement, I can click that below and have them add another one. I can even have them score at least a certain grade before they are allowed to move on. So it really allows you to control how students move through the content. This, probably more, this is probably more useful for an online environment as opposed to a blended environment like we have here at Center Grove. However, you may find this very useful for say days where you have subs or if you're doing mastery opportunities where students can't move on until they get a certain grade on the quiz. This is a very, very useful tool for them. So again, just talking a little bit about modules. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue this. So as you can see, there's a lot that's going on here, um, but it's really, really useful tool to help students understand what's being done a certain day, helps them understand the objectives, how things are chunked, as well as keeping them within a certain framework of the module. It also allows you to control the student's access to the content. I've hopefully you found this useful and understand a little bit more about modules and utilizing those in Canvas. Um, there's probably some other features as well that we can go through uh, a little bit later on, but 
Um, seems like everything's pretty good here. So if you have any questions, anything like that, please let me know. Um, and have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.